time travel. It sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie, when in fact it could be more of a reality than we think. UConn professor Ronald Mallett is on the cutting edge of research that may make time travel possible someday. He's the author of Time Travel, a scientist's personal mission to make time travel a reality. And he joins me now. Welcome, Professor Mallett. Thank you very it's much. It's great to have you. It's a pleasure to be here. All right, time travel has been the subject of so many movies, books, we're really fascinated about this subject. Is it really truly a possibility? Yes, as a matter of fact, what people don't realize is that not only is it a possibility, but we've actually already taken the baby steps and we can actually move things into the future. And we're on the brink of being able to move things into the past. Well, we were just talking about this, how really the space is really like the wild, wild west. Right. But when you say it's really becoming more a reality, what do you mean by that? Well, the thing is, is that this is based on Einstein's theories of relativity. Einstein developed two theories. One, the special theory of relativity, which says that time can be affected by speed. And then another theory developed, which was called the general theory of relativity, it says time can be affected by gravity. Now using time affected by speed, we actually have been able to show that moving clocks slow down. Time actually slows down the faster that you move. And this is what Einstein predicted. And when I talk about a clock, I'm talking about the human metabolism, you know, your heart rate. Those are clocks. That means that you would actually age less the faster that you move. And this is what we mean by time travel, because if you're moving fast enough, you age less, and everyone else is aging at a normal rate. So you arrive in the future, you're actually younger than everyone else. And that's time travel. All right, we'll talk more about that. But first, let's find out how this all came about. What got you started with this subject? Well, it actually all began with my father and with a tragedy that happened in my life. I was the oldest of four children. And, and there's a, a picture of your family. That's right. And uh, my uh, father, for me, the sun rose and set on him. I mean, he was a giant in my life. He actually was a television repairman in the Bronx. And he was the center of my life. The thing is, is that we didn't know he had a weak heart. And when he was only 33 years old, he died of a massive heart attack. I was 10 years old. In my world, I was, it was shattered. I mean, I just went from being a happy kid to a very depressed kid. But I loved to read. That was one of the gifts he left me. And about a year after he died, when I was 11, I came across this magazine, this illustrated magazine, which was based on a very famous book. And there it is. The Time Machine by H.G. Wells. And that, in a sense, really saved my sanity and saved my life because I thought if I could build a time machine, as H.G. Wells mm -hmm. talked about, then I could go back into the past and see him again and maybe save his life. So that became my passion, but I have to mention it became my secret passion because I knew people were already worried about me. And if I would tell them that I wanted to build a time machine, I might not want to deal with the consequences. So that actually became a secret passion. However, I was fortunate enough that about a year after that, I came across another paperback, and this one talked about the genius Einstein. The paperback was called The Universe and Dr. Einstein. And in it, it said that Einstein said that the river of time can be affected that time is not something that is absolutely can be altered. And I thought, if that's so, and this is Einstein saying this, then that means there's real science behind that. So Einstein became my second passion, and that is where it began. I shouldn't say it was just like straight from A to B, because what happened was is that after my father died, the family really plunged into poverty. And I talk all about that in, in my book, my memoir, but the thing is, so college wasn't automatically in my background. In fact, I served in the Air Force out after I got out of high school in, uh, during the Vietnam War era, and that's how I eventually used the GI Bill to go to Penn State, and that's where I got my degrees. So this is a, a, a memoir. Your book is a memoir. That's right. But in it, obviously, you talk about time travel. That's right. So let's talk about the the Einstein theory okay. that we want to explain how why we think this is really going to happen. That's right. Well, the thing is, as I mentioned, that he developed two theories. One was the special theory of relativity, which he developed in 1905 when he was only 26. And that theory says that time can be altered by speed. Now, you might say, has this been shown? Not only has it been shown, and it must be one of there was an experiment that was done in 1971 at the Naval Observatory where they took two atomic clocks. Now, atomic clocks are the most precise timekeeping mechanism we have. One of the clocks was kept at rest at the Naval Observatory. The other was put on an ordinary passenger jet and flown around the world at the speed of sound. When they brought it back, they actually found that the clock 
that had been on the passenger jet had slowed down. It had actually lost time. This means that the scientists on board, their heart rate, this was all affected. Now you might say, how come this wasn't known everywhere? It's because it was only by just fractions of a second. According to Einstein's theory, the faster we move, the more this will happen. That's why I said this is the baby steps, because eventually when we have rockets that can go close to the speed of light, it won't just be in terms of fractions of a second, it'll be in terms of years. Exactly. Oh my goodness. All right, so we have a diagram we want to show everybody first. Right. Now, well, the thing is, is that my theory is based on Einstein's other theory, his second theory, which says that time is affected by gravity. And what my... What we just showed there. That's right. And the thing is, is that and according to Einstein, the stronger gravity is, the more time will get slowed down. Einstein also said that, according to that theory, space acts like a substance. That is to say, we can alter space by having matter in it and energy in it. We can alter space and alter time. Space and time are connected to each other. What I realize is that if you create, a, if you use a device, and this device is called a ring laser, mm -hmm. what it, a ring laser is is just simply you have a beam of light, laser light, that's bouncing around between these mirrors. And that's what we're seeing right that's there. Right. And this causes a twisting mm -hmm. of the empty space. Now, the way that we can actually think of the twisting of that empty space by the circulating laser beam is by a simple cup of coffee. Okay, this is much more visual here. <laughs> that's right. Now, the thing is, is that, as I said, according to Einstein, empty space actually acts as though it were a substance. So let's think of this coffee as being like empty space. And let's think of that circulating light beam is like the spoon. Now, you can see what happens to the coffee as I stir it around. Yes. Okay? That's what the circulating light beam is doing to the empty space. It's causing the empty space to swirl around. Now, you might say, wait a minute, though. If it's empty space, how do I see that? Mm -hmm. Well, in the case of the coffee bean, I could actually see that. You want me to do it? OK, you, thank and you. And you continue. How many do you want in there? Uh, just one. There. OK, there it goes. Now, if you look at the coffee bean, you can see that the coffee bean swirls around. Now, the thing is, is that so what's happening is, is the coffee's moving the coffee being around. In the case of the empty space, if I put a particle called a neutron, which as you know is part of every atom, if I put a neutron into the empty space, then as the circulating light beam is twisting the space, the space will drag the neutron around. So I'll actually be able to see that neutron moving around. Now in Einstein's theory, space and time are linked to each other. Whatever you do to space also happens to time. time so yes. eventually, now you have to think, realize that all of us are moving along the river of time from the past to the present to the future. What will happen is, is that eventually if that twisting of space is strong enough, it will twist that timeline into a loop. So imagine now that that timeline is bent into a loop. We can go from the past to the present to the future and then, then back. back to the past. Okay, very good. Unfortunately, we ran out of time, but really quickly, Spike Lee is looking at making your book into a movie. That's right. He's making it into a feature film, or really a regular feature film with major actors. Well, we wish you well with that. Again, the name of the book is Time Travel, A Scientist's Personal Mission to Make Time Travel a Reality. Professor Mallet, it was great to talk to you. Well, it was a pleasure being here. Thank you very much. You're welcome.